Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to another episode of Heathen Dad. I'm your host, Wolf the Red. Today, we'll be talking about Easter and its social connections to pagans modernly. There's been a hundred videos made, thousands of Facebook posts, and Twitter posts, and Instagram posts, and TikToks, full of misinformation about the history of Easter, and how it's pagan, and how it's not pagan, and blah blah blah. I'm, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about what we're going through as pagans modernly when Easter rolls around, especially here in the United States. I know that for many of you, you feel like you can't be yourself. You can't be publicly pagan, which is a video that I'm working on in tandem with a few other things, and we'll dive into that in the future. But for now, I want to talk about how when it comes around to holidays, especially one associated with Jesus rising from the dead, how he is risen is all you ever see. Which, funnily enough, if you do the hashtag he is risen, and you capitalize that I, it just looks like you're saying hell's risen, H-E-L-S, risen. Uh, and I find that incredibly funny because the goddess hell is well and good and out there doing doing her job, taking care of people, taking care of our ancestors for us. So uh, I do agree, hell's risen. This isn't supposed to be a persecution video, a uh, pagan persecution complex video. There's enough of that out there with St. Patrick's Day and, oh, we were the snakes he drove at Ireland. None of that. More, I want to talk about what pagans go through on a day-to-day -day basis and then especially around times like these. So, when it comes time for Easter to roll around, you know, I, I know that many of you are forced to get up and go to church for probably the only time that year you will go. I think uh, as far as holidays go, that even Christmas has kind of died down a little bit. I know that there's still some really rabid evangelicals out there that turn it way up around Christmas time. And of course, we all know the. It feels nice to say Christmas again. It's like nobody told you you didn't. Anyways, as far as Easter goes, the whole point of Easter is this blood sacrifice of a mortal man who we're told is a god who was also one of three gods, but he's the same god, and he's sacrificing himself to himself for himself to prevent himself from hurting us because of something someone else did never really clicked with me and i feel like it probably didn't click with many of you either which is good honestly because that makes no sense but the point is we still sometimes have to go and sit in church and that is boring and usually very debasing when we go we have to sit there and listen about how and i feel like this rhetoric is more and more these days those pagans out there trying to ruin the holiday so i've, I've seen that a few times already today but also i know that some of you i reached out to my community of course and Asked for some input from them just to see what they were dealing with. And they too said that it was rhetoric that they're kind of being forced to deal with when they have to go to these church services, these early Sunday sunrise church services. That we pagans are out here worshipping false deities which false false demons which of course is just you know relabeling our gods our very real very powerful gods and for many people they are in the broom closet 
for those who don't know, the broom closet is that safe space where you have to hide your paganism. It is where you pretend you're not pagan around other people. And that's not good. That's not good that we have to do that. It's not good that anybody has to do that. I don't have to do that. I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky in my life. I, I, you know, I'm a straight, cishet, white dude, big ass beard, covered in tattoos now, head to toe. Uh, work in a blue collar factory. I'm in a motorcycle club. All that kind of stuff. The last thing somebody's going to think is I'm a pagan. I do have pagan tattoos all over me head hands back all the way up my arm i'm wearing you know wearing my tear hoodie right now wear a mjolnir uh my my motorcycle cut has my mjolnir on it and has a bunch of references to the gods so if somebody really wanted to pay attention okay yeah clearly he's not christian but most people don't pay attention most people avert their eyes and so I get away with it. Many of you can't get away with it. You live with scrutinizing parents or you're at a job that pays way too close attention to your personal life and will fuck with you if you present some form of religiosity that's out of the norm. And that's wrong. But sometimes that's society we live in. If it was up to me, we would fix that. But I'm not in control. I'm just a YouTuber, and all I can do is give you some advice on how to deal. And so that's kind of what I'm here to do today. One of the first things I'll tell you is that you need to be careful. When you go into these environments, these church environments, for many of you, you're queer, you're trans, you're autistic, you're... Uh, neurodivergent in some way, you have ADHD, you're everything that the church does not like. And that's a problem for many of you. The church wants heteronormative, neurotypical people to fall in line and write checks to keep the church going. Now, I'm sure many people are very honest in how they present themselves, they actually are worried about your soul, you know, you have friends and family you probably grew up with who are genuinely concerned for you, but when it comes to the structure of the church, they have a goal, and if you are outside of the line, you don't fit within that goal, you're a problem, and the church does not like problems, they like to sweep problems under the rug. How many of you grew up and felt like you weren't a part of the church really even before you stopped believing even when you were trying your hardest because you thought that's what you were supposed to do how many of you felt like outcasts before you even became pagan probably is what pushed you to start looking into paganism is because of how the church threw you out because of who you were as a person so when you return to these places it's not a happy place to return to uh, even if the church turned everything around, those memories are still there, that trauma is still there. Many of us suffered it. I grew up Southern Baptist. Uh, my grandfather was a preacher. I've mentioned this a few times. Uh, he was on a grand council and would visit churches and take me with him. I've probably visited a hundred churches in Georgia, probably more than that, in the tri-state area. And when I tell you that I understand these experiences, yes, I'm white and straight and all that good stuff. Uh, but I still can get a pretty good feel for how rough it would have to be for somebody who's not like me. And so when we return to these churches and we have to sit there with our trauma, with our rough pasts staring us in the face, uh, we have to then also hide who we are now as pagans. And you know, these Christians in these churches are talking about he has risen, uh, the sacrifices they made for us because we're bad people and we're demons or worshiping demons. I mean, that's beside the fact that, you know, 
Jesus himself was a necromancer, and Christians should be practicing necromancy if they're trying to live in Jesus' image. I don't know the last time y'all have been to church, but I didn't see any necromancy at this church, so how true are they really living anyways? How dare they jump? So when you're in these spaces, you have to, you know, hide your Mjolnirs. You have to, you know, leave your pagan shirts at home. You can't talk about your faith. When someone goes, oh, you know, I can pray for you and all this other stuff, you kind of just have to smile and nod. It's very annoying. And it's probably also weird for us as pagans, especially those of us who are part of big communities like The Hold, the one that I run with Ocean, where we, we talk and fight back against rhetoric of blood sacrifices, against all of this concept of good versus evil and uh, sin and inherent badness and all this other stuff. Like, we don't, we don't have those problems in our theology. We don't have those issues in our structure. Even controversial deities like Hel or Fenrir or Jormungandr or Loki or Engrabotha or Aegir, we don't, we don't look at those deities as inherently evil. They're not out here to destroy the world. There are several videos that I can point you to on Ocean Keltoy's channel. Uh, that give very good theological reasons for why those deities aren't explicitly evil and aren't trying to end the world like what the Christian faith deals with with the eternal fight of God versus Lucifer, Satan, the devil, Diablo. We don't, we don't have those problems. And so when we go into these environments, it's already putting us out of our normal comfort zone. And I want to make it clear that I don't hate Christianity. I don't hate Christians. I think that evangelical Christians and the Christian nationalism movement is a cancer on this country. And I do have scathing criticisms of the structure of the church as it is. But I do honestly and genuinely believe that there is a beautiful faith buried beneath everything that has been tacked onto it over the last few hundred years. And that if we could strip away all of that baggage, that there could possibly be something worth engaging with in praxis. But it would take some work and some time. And right now, it feels like we're fighting for our lives. And so when we're in these environments and we feel that fight or flight instinct, we have to hide who we are. Uh, and I do encourage you to do so. If you're living with your parents or you have roommates or your boss is at the church with you or has invited you to go to church and you feel like you have to to like get some promotion, because I know that that's a case out there. I, I know for a fact someone's dealing with that. But they have to pretend to be something they're not to get ahead in the job place, which is disgusting. But I know that that situation exists. In those situations, you have to remember, the gods will not forsake you for this. I feel very confident stating that out loud. Pray to your gods in your head, they will be listening to you. When you are asked to pray in church, bow your head. Pray to Thor. Pray to Athena. Pray to Zeus. Pray to Ra. Pray to Set. Pray to Bast. Whoever you feel like you need to pray to, to get the comfort that you need, I genuinely encourage you to do so. And when you end up in a conversation with a Christian and you feel like they're pushing themselves on you, uh, if you are able to do so, set a clear boundary. You know, like, uh, thank you, but no thank you, is usually all you have to say. Or... I'm just not interested in that right now. I don't want to have that conversation. Can we talk about something else? Uh, I'm just not in the headspace for it at the moment. Please, let's move on. Um, be polite, but also be assertive, if you can be. If it's with a parent who you know would kick you out, then don't do that. Don't do that. Just let them say what they need to say. They are just words. Yes, mentally, it is very rough. I will never pretend it's not. 
But when it comes to you having a roof over your head and being safe and fed, or you being on the streets because of the gods you worship, I would much rather you be in a safe environment and be able to work hard and get out of that situation. I know that's easier said than done. I know everybody's working as hard as they can, and I would never accuse anybody of not working hard, but I don't want somebody putting themselves in a bad situation over their faith. Culturally, it can be really rough for people as well when it comes to living in the Christian society, especially uh, around this time period, because everything's closed on this most holy of Sundays. Try to go to a store in your local town, especially one that's a little bit smaller, it's one that's not secular, especially one that's so twisted up in faith where every store owner is attending church that day. You know, big corporate stores like Walmart or whatever will remain open, of course, but a majority of local smaller town businesses are going to shut down. You need anything, you need art art supplies for a project that's due tomorrow, good luck. Forgot to get diapers for your kid, too bad. Gotta, gotta wait till Monday. And so when you encounter this rhetoric of he is risen, you know, like it or not, he is risen, even with like, beyond like Facebook, trying to like look at a buy or sell page, trying to buy something, first thing you're going to say back is, you know, yeah, it's 20 bucks, but also he is risen. It's like, what? What does that have to do with anything? Uh, it's very strange uh, how often they try to insert this uh, rhetoric as if it's all they know. Uh, and for many of them, it is all they know, which is unfortunate because it prevents people from having any kind of pluralistic dialogue. They've already written off everything before you even have a chance to have a conversation with them. Uh, letting them know you're uncomfortable or that you don't believe the same way they do. Uh, it's not just a conversation they disagree with. It can sometimes be extremely dangerous. Uh, they'll get angry, they'll get upset that you would dare challenge everything that makes them up as people. Their personalities are so wrapped up. I'm sure some of you used to be this way. Uh, it's not a dig. I, you know, I've, I've seen it. I've seen friends. I've seen other pagans talk about how, like, I used to be that Jesus freak. Uh, and now, you know, they're devout pagans. They're very pious in their devotion in a healthy way. Car sounds nice. And then let's talk about another situation where, let's say you are kind of on good terms with your family, and they're at least you know, decent with you about your faith. I may not agree or like it, but they're agreeing to disagree, and it's not a problem. But then they go to church, and they're being fed rhetoric by the church uh, on these Sundays, and especially at Easter, that you, the pagan, the queer pagan, if you are, which most of you seem to be, uh, that you're the problem. And that they should drop communication with you. Your influence is going to corrupt them. Any kind of mutual agreement is actually harmful to the churchgoer. They teach the congregation to hate you. And that's not good. That's not right. We don't, we don't want that. We don't want to hate the Christians. And we definitely don't want the Christians to hate us. And it's hard around this time of year because this is supposed to be a celebration time. It's supposed to be uh, a time of, you know, fertility of the land where the animals are starting to frolic and, you know, repopulate and coming out of hibernation and the, the insects are going wild and getting them, getting those flowers going again and you know, we just had some beautiful rain. The day today was absolutely beautiful. I tried to get some footage of it. Um, I was only get, able to get a little, but uh, we are going to have an absolutely gorgeous May thanks to the fertility of the planet, thanks to the cycle of nature. And this is supposed to be a time that we celebrate that and we're made to feel 
guilty for that. We're made to feel bad. We're made to feel wrong. We're made to feel evil by the Christian society that we are forced to exist in that is actively hostile towards our faith systems. Even if you just try to say that you don't celebrate Easter, you get comments such as, this isn't about you, this is about Jesus. And it just, it makes it hard to even be, you know, atheist. This is something that I agree with atheists on, that we, sh we shouldn't have to be in such a pushy society when it comes to Christianity. Many people feel that it's the worst weekend in the entire year. As I mentioned earlier, that Christmas is just not as pushy when it comes to religion, when it comes to Christianity, and when it comes to Jesus. Even though Christmas is supposed to be, you know, the day he is born, and a star is born, and blah blah blah, Easter is their Super Bowl, you know? Christmas may be the playoffs, but Easter is definitely the Christian Super Bowl. For many of you, it's just another day. Uh, you go to work, or you just kind of hang out at home, and you do what you want to do on your off day, because most likely your business is shut down. But for so many other people, the day is used as a weapon, and uh, you have to keep yourself safe when we're in times like these. My advice to pagans in these days is to only come out to those you know and trust uh, if you're in a position like I am where you can talk about it freely then do so set your boundaries as you need it is really good for your mental health for every person that I tell to be in the closet what I really hope is that you get to step out and be pagan publicly it is good for you. It is good for your mental health. But it might not be good for your immediate physical well-being if you end up homeless or in arguments. Because sometimes it's easier on you to just not have that argument. Like, okay, yes, it's better to live your truth, uh, but if living your truth causes you an argument literally every night with people you do care about and love, then one that's going to wear away at those feelings of love and caring that you want to maintain, and two, it will wear on you. It'll, it'll wear you down. And so, only do so if you absolutely can in a safe manner. But I would encourage you to do so if it's safe to. If you live on your own, if you pay your own bills, if your job doesn't care, if you have a good family support structure, if you have good friends, if you live in a community that's not so ruled by your local churches, then that's good. And it's probably a good time for you to be more publicly pagan. Wear those religious symbols. Wear those shirts. Check out my red bubble. Grab some god art. Put it on your wall. Wear god art shirts. Plug, plug. Wink, wink. Link in the description. The real problem is the nature of the anti-pluralist agenda of the church. And that's something that needs to be remembered. That if you come out as pagan, especially around this time, especially going to church because it's around this time, their goal is not pluralism. And I think that everybody knows that. But it's good to say it out loud as a reminder. And if we want to fix this, the only real goal that we can have in place is, I'm going to read this from a comment, awareness, education, and mutual celebration. We should be able to share our pagan practices with local Christians that love us and care about us, as they say. And Christians should be able to share some of their Christian practices with us, and in a mutual way, that is not debasing, that is not aggressive, that is not toxic, respects any boundaries that we may have in place. I don't need to be proselytized to. 99% of us were Christians to begin with before we became pagans. You don't have to preach to me. I, I could probably preach to you better than you could preach to me. 
But if you have something interesting that you'd like to share, some spiritual experience, I'd be interested in hearing it. As long as you're also willing to hear the spiritual experiences that I've had with my gods and treat it with the same respect. I have a three-year-old. I want him to grow up in a society where mutual interfaith discussions can take place in a positive manner. I want this idea of Christian nationalism and uh, rabid evangelicalism to die. I think it hurts the country, I think it hurts the populace, and it prevents people from being able to connect to each other spiritually. Uh, pagans are afraid to come out to each other as pagan because they're afraid that the other pagan might be a secret Christian. Uh, I know that we've told some stories in the past where uh, two friends were pagan and neither one of them were willing to share that they were pagan until they ended up at the same pagan event. And they just did the Spider-Man meme pointing at each other going, Wait, you're pagan? Wait, you're pagan? Why didn't you say anything? Figured you were Christian. Figured you were Christian. It's, it's harmful. It's not a good environment for people to exist in. We need to do better. And Christians need to do better. We, I feel like, I know many of us end up in a space where uh, that angry pagan phase, it's like, ah, oh, we do not, we do not kneel, our gods are powerful. Your god was nailed to a cross, mine has a hammer. <laughs> I, I tweeted that out one time kind of as a joke. And it got way too many likes. I was like, no, 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 this was a meme, stop. Um, <laughs> but uh, that angry pagan phase uh, is something that we all kind of go through. You know, I'm sure most of us do. And I was one of them. It's like, I was lied to. I was, I was betrayed. I was taken advantage of. I was manipulated. And those feelings are valid. But it also comes a time where we need to be focusing on ourselves. We need to be deepening our own spirituality, our understanding of our own spirituality. We need to have a solid foundation uh, of theology and being able to justify the why of what we believe what we believe. And having to fight for our existence in society hinders a lot of that growth. And so I just want people to be careful. I want people to be aware of themselves and be aware of the spaces that they're in. Um, if people have questions and they need community support, I really do encourage people to come into the Discord. If you're a Christian listening to this, if somebody's sent this to you, if some pagan has sent this to you and you're a Christian, come into the Discord server as long as you intend on being positive and genuine and looking for... Uh, good communication. I assume if a, one of your pagan friends has sent you this video, they're trusting you to do so. That means they're probably part of my community and uh, they're inviting you into our home uh, on, in our Discord server. Uh, but there's almost 5,000 of us and if you want to come and be part of the community, uh, I definitely encourage any of you pagans to come and exist in a space where you can be pagan, uh, all flavors, every flavor. If, if, it's, if it is a pagan belief that is outside of Christianity, I guarantee you there's probably 50 people who think just like you do in this community. There are the wide range of beliefs. Are, uh, are, it's, it's a very multicultural and multi-faith space that exists in a positive way and that's the way it should be and maybe one day there may be Christians there now we won't make it a Christian space but I won't it's not an anti-Christian space even now even in what we deal with we have people who come in who want to shit all over Christians and all of the mod team and the members who've been there a long time they know it's like no 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 you criticize the religion uh, with good faith but you will not be talking uh, about Christians in an evil way or whatever. And like I said, I'm, I'm not anti-Christian, but I have scathing criticisms. And so uh, there needs to be a healthy balance of that. But when it comes to Easter itself for pagans, uh, you know, you can still celebrate Easter. You can still celebrate 
the time period. You can still celebrate the uh, you can celebrate the season. You can still put out eggs. I mean, come on, what's what's the real meaning of the holiday? It, it's it's that magical bunny who lays its eggs, and we have to go and find its treasure. Everybody knows this. This has been this has been the way it has been for a long time. And so that's really what we need to be focusing on, is the magical bunny and the eggs. And there are ways to do that uh, that involves everybody, from your little kids all the way up to adults. There is nothing more fun than watching, you know, your 50-year-old or 60-year-old dad run around trying to find eggs with the little ones. That is such a great experience to share. And... I encourage people do more of that. You should be finding different ways to celebrate this time period that doesn't immediately connect back to Christianity. We can shed that as pagans. We can we can celebrate the equinoxes. We can do Sigurdblok. We can uh, we can celebrate Jörf and Thor and all the other deities that deal with this time period of the year. I am interested to hear from any of you pagans who still celebrate uh, this day. If you are a Christo pagan, I'd definitely be interested to see how you syncretize your Christian practice with your pagan practice. And if you're just a, you know, if you're a heathen, if you're a pagan, and you have different practices or traditions, family traditions, how do you go about uh, dealing with that? If you have any stories that you'd like to share, I want to hear them. Come to the Discord server. I've got a channel set up specifically for discussing videos that Ocean and I put out. Or you can leave a comment on the video. Share it out. Uh, share it with a Christian who you think might need to hear these words. Share it with uh, a fellow pagan friend who might need to hear these words. Have their feelings a little bit validated. But um, I want y'all to stay safe out there. Uh, I want y'all to be able to deepen your faith in a uh, productive way that makes you feel validated um, and I of course need to give a shout out to my wonderful patreon my wolf pack oh! I want to uh, invite you to join the wolf pack if you want to the discord server is absolutely free uh, the patreon is just a way to support the work that I do the videos that I put out the book clubs that I run, the UPG nights that I run, the rituals that I write and produce and perform for the community, the gatherings that I put on. I put on gatherings once a year for a week, and I also uh, do monthly gatherings here in the Atlanta area. Uh, those are the local gatherings are absolutely free. People can come. I uh, just bring something to eat with you. We have a big potluck. We have way too much food every time. And we do a ritual that either Ocean or myself uh, host. And we have a really good time with local people as we look to build the church and eventually end up on the land. So I definitely recommend people getting more involved in the community and taking this, you know, as seriously as they want to. I'm planning on running this full steam ahead and, you know, building something lasting that'll last generations uh and i want people i want good dedicated people by my side to help me do this can't do it alone i've, I've been doing it alone for some time but I'd be interested to see some new hands join in the join in the fight here but uh you know in the meantime go big or go home <laughs>